Stephen Markowitz along with Bruce Landon, another edition of Falcons Web TV. This week we come to you from Steve Sports in West Springfield down on Front Street. Steve has a very proud sponsor but also has this little miniature hockey, Springfield Hockey Hall of Fame here. Uh, it's a place that I come to uh, quite a bit. If you love hockey, if you love Springfield hockey, it's a great place to spend some time, take a peek at it. Uh, Steve's a great host, and uh, we appreciate him having him down here today. But also don't forget the Springfield Hockey Heritage Society. Check that out as well. Um, and something else I want to talk about, Bruce, here is we talked a little bit about a ticket campaign here. I um, also want to talk about referrals and just how important referrals are. I know we've gotten some, some chatter on the Facebook, and how the biggest question you get on there is how, how can I help and what can I do? And just referrals kind of ties into that as far as trying to help grow this this proud franchise uh, to what, back to where it should be. Well, our, our, our best fans should be able to give us leads of people who should be fans or who want to become fans. And, uh, you know, in any kind, of, any kind of sales business you're in, you depend on referrals to, to get new business. And uh, we're no different than that. And we've reached out to our booster club with a little incentive program for them if they can recommend somebody what we're willing to do for them. And we'll open up that to any of our fans or any of our season ticket holders that are watching that, you know, if they can recommend somebody uh, that then buys a, a, one of our plans with us. And then, like I said, every ticket counts. So it doesn't have to be the full season ticket. If somebody buys a six-game plan, that's important to us. And we'll make sure that season ticket holder is compensated for what they're doing. And it's a program that, you know, other teams in our league have used. We've tried it before with, with limited success. A uh, perfect example is today I had lunch with a good friend of mine and a sponsor, Pete Kenyon, uh, uh, owns uh, Axiom Insurance, among others. And uh, we got talking about that, and he's setting up a, a meeting for me to meet with a lawyer friend of his and uh, an accountant friend of his and use, as Peter calls, his power of influence and the people that he does business with. And the three of us, or four of us, rather, are going to get together and start sharing ideas and leads and names and referrals and who can we talk to and who can they talk to on our behalf. So, you know, again, we... You know, sales are important to us. We have a good staff working the phones out in the in the marketplace, uh, setting up meetings. But if there are fans who are watching and they can help us grow our base and and uh, do some things for us, we're willing to help them as well in in certain different in different ways. Yeah, another topic that came up again this week, and I know it's something we talked about yesterday, was doing a Falcons focus group. Uh, seems to be another hot topic here. A lot of great people on Facebook who want to be part of that, and I promise we're gonna. We've got something that we're going to put on Facebook uh, this week, kind of promoting how we're going to handle that, and we can tease it a little bit today. Uh, but you know, the goal for the goal for us of any focus group, and I know it's something you did in the past, mm -hmm. was you had a group of people that you talked to, and I think I think we both agree in talking yesterday is the biggest thing that we want to do with a new focus group moving forward is get a lot of different voices. And, and right. you know, how are we to, to cut out? Okay, these are the eight people right. that we're going to want. We don't want to make any cuts. We want as many people, many different voices, and. Uh, something that we're going to throw on there is basically opening it up here sometime in June. We've got to pick a date, which I should hopefully have solidified this week that you'll see. Uh, and just opening it up, maybe capping it at 20, 25 people, bringing them down, and just doing almost like a miniature open sure. house where you spend a couple hours, you throw some topics out there, and uh, you basically just get some feedback. Well, I think it's a great idea. And like you said, uh, a few years ago, I had a, a great group of people who formed a focus group, and we met in my in our conference room. and. Uh, we'd go over some different ideas and they'd make some recommendations. But the other beauty of it is, I think, is unless you're in our business, you don't understand certain things that can be done, certain things can't be done for a lot of different reasons. And uh, so the focus group that we had before, it was really good for them to ask a question, well, how about doing this? And then the response maybe wasn't what they wanted to hear, but they understood why uh, they were get, why we were not able to do certain things. So that allowed them to then spread the word around the Mass Mutual Center to their colleagues and people they sit with about uh, different things. So it gives, I think, people a better insight into our in, into our business and the decision-making process that goes through. I think there are some people that just, you know, they don't know our business, same as I don't know other businesses. Mm -hmm. So I think it gives a, a group, if we can bring a group of 20, 25 people together, share ideas, and out of that, if we can come away with, if it's one or it's five different ideas like we're doing in these, these chats and the Facebooks, uh, things you're doing, if we can come away with three or four ideas, five ideas that we haven't thought of or that, hey, maybe we can execute this a different way, that's what it's all about. But as well, it gives people a behind-the-scenes look at what we're doing. And I, I think you've seen this uh, with interns that have joined us. Uh, they come in and they get sort of, well, gee, I didn't realize this until they got really in, in, the, sort of the, in the trenches with us, so to speak. And so I think uh, the focus group will serve a couple of purposes. It'll help us. I'll also make, help them understand our business a little better. Absolutely. Damon Markowitz along with Bruce Landon, another edition of Falcons Web TV. 
as we come to you from Steve Sports in West Springfield down on Front Street on the road this week as we took it out on location. We're getting so big, we got to take it on location now. <laughs> uh, I tried to convince Steve and his staff that it would be a live studio audience, but maybe we'll maybe we'll contemplate that down the road. You'll be like Matt Lauer pretty soon, that whole thing. Where 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 in the heck is Matt Lauer? Where in the heck is Damon Damon Markowitz? Well, yeah, well yeah, <laughs> Matt makes pretty good coins, so <laughs> I'll have to track down his agent. But uh, obviously these, are, these chats that we're doing here just all ties into exactly what we want to do this spring and keeping that communication and, and whether it's the chats and the focus groups, a lot of good things going on. And like I said, don't forget to join us on Facebook and Twitter, updated daily, hourly. Uh, check those out. Go to falconsahl.com. You'll see the links on the bottom, and, and be sure to join that. As there, it's not just content during the season. A lot of good content going on as, as we get into the spring and summer. And uh, some old laundry I want to bring back up from some old chats. The first topic I want to bring up is the color man. Uh, we had a, a conversation yes, about a color man from Mike Kelly. You talked to Mike. What did, did you find out? Well, I, I promised everybody or whoever asked that question, I would go to Mike right after the chat, and I did, and I asked Mike. I said, have you ever had any interest in bringing a color man on board? And he sort of was the deer in the headlights look at first, yeah. and uh, I said, you know, it's your call. If, and he said, I have no problem having a color man if we can find the right person. Uh, Mike has had some bad experiences with uh, color commentators uh, over the years in his career in different cities. And uh, he said, if you get the right person that understands the broadcast and understands not only the broadcast, how it works, but is understands the game well enough to bring a different element to the broadcast, he would certainly entertain it. Uh, he asked me if I had anybody in mind, and I said, no, it was just a question that was asked. Uh, so uh, I'm not saying we're going to look for somebody, but certainly if there was somebody out there perhaps that Mike felt comfortable with, that we felt knew the game well enough to, to add a different dimension to the broadcast, uh, we would certainly look into it. And just to update you on some old laundry as well, the very first meeting that we're going to have with the Falcons fans against the Whale fans, and for those of you who, who didn't see an older chat that we had, uh, there's going to be, we're trying to coordinate a game here, and Seth on Facebook's been great kind of leading that from our uh, from, the, from, the, from the fans' end. Um, something that we're looking to do, having the Falcons fans play the Whale fans before one of our games. We have our very first meeting coming up uh, June 1st at great. 10 a.m. in our office. Uh, we'll be able to go through and, and just kind of map out everything yeah. it's going to entail. So I, it's I think just, that's uh, great, Dan. I, I think it's uh, again, it shows the people that we're you know you're following up, and some of the suggestions they're putting out there are just not uh, falling on deaf ears. We're going to follow up on them and see if they can work. And I think this idea of you know this could take off. I mean, it could be the Falcons fans versus the Whale fans. It could be the Falcons fans versus against the Providence Bruins fans. You know, we we have such a close geographical rivals with Worcester and Providence, and certainly. Hartford that uh, these things can take off and, and uh, sort of develop on their own and I think it's a great first step. And before we leave this room and this chat this week, there's a bunch of masks here behind you. Uh, is there a Bruce Landon mask uh, somewhere on that shelf? Not on this shelf, but it's going to be on this shelf. Uh, made me think uh, Ralphie Calvinis found my old goalie mask uh, in our old uh, storage room one day and brought it into me and I, I honestly thought it disappeared and it's uh, it's the original sort of Jerry Cheever's mold, uh, made by a fellow by name Ernie Higgins in Boston, and um, I I thought it gone and it's sitting on a shelf in my office, but I'd much sooner see it here uh, and certainly uh, you know uh, give it to Steve and let him put it up. Uh, again, uh, you know I I was never a big collector. I don't even have any very few pictures of the days I played. So if uh, if Steve would like my mask, I'm going to bring it in and give it to him. Uh, a uh, quick story short on the Ernie Higgins who made my mask and certainly Jerry Cheever's mask and a lot of the players of, of, of goaltenders that age. Uh, he, I had to actually sign a waiver because when he had he cut out the eyes, I chiseled the eyes down even further myself to make the holes bigger and Ernie made me sign a waiver that I wouldn't hold him uh, responsible if I was to get uh, a serious injury to an eye. So, But uh, it's quite an experience getting those masks made. Now they don't do it. We see all the new cages and all the crazy masks. I still like the old Jerry Cheever style myself. Yeah, it's amazing how much the game has changed because yeah. now uh, you know you see in games now as soon as the the goalie loses his helmet, the whistles go whistle. dead. And, Are you crazy? Uh, you know, a little different back then. A little then. different back then. Yeah, you know, a little different for sure. I mean, I turned pro in '69, and it was, you know, back in those days, you didn't have to wear a mask. I actually played one game when I in '68, uh, my last year junior in Peterborough, with a, without a mask, and took eight stitches over the eye, and the mask went back on. So, uh, different breed. Different, different breed. breed. Well, thanks again for joining us, Bruce, and we'll see you hopefully next week. Thanks, Damon, yes. Thank you once again. Thanks to Steve Sports as we give him one last plug here as we came to you this week from Steve Sports in West Springfield down on Front Street. Check Steve out, great fan. Check out the Springfield Hockey Heritage Society, and don't forget to, uh, to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Go to falconsahl.com, you'll see the links. So once again, keep those topics coming in on the Facebook chats, on the Twitter chats. We really appreciate it, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us.